Hello, gem hunter. This man is about to destroy a real diamond. But can a hammer destroy a real diamond? Well, you've probably been told that diamond is the hardest substance in the universe. But is it indestructible or is it just really hard? So what do you think? Well, in my opinion, it would be crazy to destroy a real diamond of considerable size just to do this test. But still, there are people who have done this test to find out the truth. But before I tell you the truth about diamonds, whether they break or not, I'm going to explain what it means to say that diamonds are the hardest substance on the face of the earth and dispel all the myths and lies you've been told about diamonds. Because that's what gives it that beautiful, glittering, metallic sheen. And it's also what makes it the most sought after gemstone of all time. You'll also learn some simple tests to find out if what you're holding is an authentic diamond or not. These tests are safe and will keep your stone intact. So back to the question that won't go away. Can a diamond be broken? The answer is yes, because even though a diamond is the hardest substance on earth, it is not the most tenacious, meaning that it is good at scratching other materials, but not the best at withstanding violent impacts. Even many laymen end up destroying valuable diamonds, thinking that this is a hardness test designed to identify diamonds. So if you don't want to be one of those people, be aware that no diamond identification test requires you to hit the diamond roughly with anything, be it a hammer or a sledgehammer. Don't do that. You could end up destroying a possible opportunity to make a lot of money. With this hardness in mind, a subscriber to our channel once asked why we don't make bulletproof vests out of diamonds, since they are the hardest substance in existence. Well, let's imagine that there was a technology to make synthetic diamonds on a large scale for a very cheap price. And we could make a diamond vest like the one in the Hobbit movie. The impact of a bullet from a firearm is as destructive as a hammer, which depending on the angle of impact, could just as easily put a hole in your diamond vest because of the low toughness of this mineral. Bulletproof vests are made of a very tough material designed to absorb the energy of projectile impact. Did it hurt? The answer is, it certainly did hurt, it hurt a lot. So if you suspect your stone is a diamond, whether cut or rough, don't do a hardness test by hitting the stone to test its toughness. As I mentioned earlier, there are other safer tests that you can do at home for very little cost. And none of them involve hammers, but then many people wonder how the hardest substance can be broken by a hammer. So to understand how a safe hardness test that you can do at home works, you need to look at the difference between hardness and toughness. Toughness is the ability of a material to absorb energy or take an impact without breaking. Hardness, on the other hand, has to do with a material's ability to resist wear and friction. Because of this, many lay people confuse these two properties and think that hardness and toughness are the same thing. So when scientists say that diamond is the hardest mineral in existence, many lay people end up thinking, okay, so diamonds are nearly indestructible. But it doesn't work like that. Take the example of the hammer. We use hammers to break rocks, drive nails, lever things, but the main characteristic of a hammer is its toughness. You can break even a large jasper stone which has a hardness of seven on the Mohs scale. However, the steel used to make a hammer only has a hardness of 5.5 on the Mohs scale, which means that in terms of hardness, the hammer has inferior toughness. Nevertheless, I can reduce a Jasper stone to dust with a hammer. But how is this possible? Well, the hammer may be less hard, but it is much tougher. The hammer won't break even if you hit it hard. If you hit the metal too hard, you might even dent it, but it won't break, not easily. And this is a common property of metals, but not of crystals. In general, the harder a mineral is, the less tough it is. That's why an impact will shake its structure and cause it to break easily. But if you cut the hammer in half with a diamond saw, could you break it in two? Well, in this case, yes, because the diamond has a maximum hardness of 10 Mohs compared to 5.5 Mohs for the hammer. The principle of hardness has to do with resistance to scratching, wear and tear of the material. A diamond is so hard that only another diamond can scratch it and nothing else. That's why diamonds are considered to be virtually eternal. After all, what mineral on earth is hard enough to scratch a diamond? 
And from this explanation, we can start the first test, which is very simple, quick, and homemade, which we always talk about here on the channel. Using the second hardest mineral in the world, known as corundum, whether it's a ruby or a sapphire, but I know you probably don't have a ruby or a sapphire at home to test a stone to see if it's a diamond or not. So you're going to use water sandpaper made of a material called carborundum, which is an industrial ruby with a hardness of 9.25. This is higher than the hardness of a natural ruby. This sandpaper will scratch anything except a real diamond, which has a hardness of 10 on the most scale. So just buy some water sandpaper and test your suspect stone by rubbing it hard against the sandpaper. But be aware that if you have a cut stone and it's not a diamond, you could end up ruining your stone, so be careful. There is also a rumor that diamonds can cut glass. But is this true? Well, it is true. In fact, you'd be surprised how many people have almost been kicked out of their homes or nearly broken up a marriage because they scratched the mirror or glass in their house with a stone to see if it was a diamond. Exaggeration aside, as with the previous tests, many lay people think that only a diamond can cut glass. But going back to the question of hardness, like the hammer, glass is about 5.5 on the Mohs scale. And an ordinary stone, such as river quartz, has a hardness of seven mohs. And it can also scratch glass, so there are many common stones that we find in nature that scratch glass because the quartz family is huge. We have amethyst, citrine, jasper, agate, chalcedony, onyx, and many other stones that have a hardness of seven and scratch glass easily. Not to mention other stones with a higher hardness that also scratch glass. So when you do this test, don't ruin the glass in your home. Do the test with water sandpaper, which is much safer and more effective. If you have a stone that you suspect may be a diamond, I recommend that you perform all possible tests, which you can check out in the previous video on how to identify diamonds, where you'll learn several home tests to identify whether you have a diamond or not. But to take advantage of this opportunity, I'm going to show you three quick tips to find out if you have a diamond or not. The first tip is the size of the stone, if it's too big. Be careful because the chances of it being a diamond are very small, it's not impossible, but in terms of probability, your chances are minimal. Because big diamonds do exist, but they come from super deep mines, dug by companies, and are still a rarity. But how big? Well, up to the size of a peanut, because that's considered big for a diamond. Anything larger than a peanut has very little chance of being a real diamond. But it's not impossible if you're very lucky. If your stone has a luster that looks like a piece of broken glass, it has very little chance of being a diamond. This is because the luster of a diamond is a metallic luster. The second tip is the metallic luster, so if it looks like glass. In this case, your stone could be a quartz crystal. If your stone is very white, the chances also decrease because clear diamonds are very rare. Diamonds come in an infinite number of colors, and we often find yellow, gray, and even black diamonds in nature, rather than the perfectly white ones we see cut in the movies. But the metallic luster of a diamond is unmistakable, even in its rough state. So if you want to see if there's a diamond among the stones you find lying around, don't expect to find only very white and clear stones. There are other qualities to diamonds. In fact, many people have found a diamond in nature and discarded it because it wasn't that bright and clear. Remember, where there's one diamond, there's more. And if you have a stone that has passed the water sandpaper test with no scratches or wear, you have a stone with good potential to be a diamond, and it's worth checking out. But if you are one of those who search for your dream diamond in nature, and you have already found stones, and even after several tests you still have doubts, Please take the opportunity to leave a comment here about which country you're looking from and what else you would like to know about diamonds. I'd also like to thank Iris Mesa, who contributed to the channel. Thank you for helping us keep this project going. In addition, if you want to go even deeper without having to research each individual stone, you can find all the gemstones tabulated with their respective characteristics in our digital gemology book for beginners. It also helps to support our gemstones channel. Now for the third diamond identification tip. It's to use these seven home tests from this video that is now appearing on your screen to identify diamonds from the comfort of your own home. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Good luck, Gem Hunter.